In a decisive move to safeguard one of its most advanced military assets, the Indian Air Force is fortifying its S-400 Triumph air defense system with an extra layer of indigenous missile shields. This comes after an alleged but unsuccessful missile strike attempted by Pakistan during Op Sindhur and amid rising concerns over Islamabad's possible acquisition of hypersonic weapons from China. Today, we break down how India plans to build a multi-layered iron shield around the S-400s or the Sudarshan Chakras of the skies. The S-400 is India's strategic air defense backbone capable of striking threats up to 400 kilometers away, from enemy jets to ballistic missiles. But during a recent flare-up, Pakistan reportedly launched a CM-400 AKG supersonic missile from a JF-17 fighter aircraft targeting an Indian S-400 battery. The attempt was thwarted, intercepted and destroyed by older Indian air defense system. According to Indian Air Force officials, the Pakistani missile, primarily designed for anti-ship role, was ill-suited for land-based radar suppression, making it ineffective against the S-400s. Now, let's try and understand basic difference between an anti-ship missile and an anti-radiation missile. To begin with, uh, I've got uh, uh, some data of anti-ship missile. Anti-ship missiles use active radar, uh, infrared and radio command and inertial navigation system to track and hit the targets. Uh, in flight profiles, when we talk of flight profile, they are surface scheming, very low altitude, waypoint way navigated uh, so that they can avoid defenses of other ships and they are unable to shoot this particular anti-ship missile. As far as warhead goes, uh, it carries various types of explosives uh, to include armor piercing, shape charges and sometimes even a nuclear depending on if it is to target a very large aircraft carrier. When we talk of launch platforms, it can be launched through surface ships, uh, the submarines, aircraft and that is how it becomes very, very versatile in deployment. Now let's talk about anti-radiation missiles. Targeting variety, anti-radiation missiles can target wide range of radar systems including those uh, that are mobile, stationary or have been shut down. This is a very peculiar quality of anti-radiation missile. Uh, some ARMs can lock on uh, before they are launched and some advanced ARMs can be uh, locked on once they have been launched. So this is there are two types of uh, ARMs. As far as payload is concerned, they are designed to destroy the targeted radar system, which includes high explosive or fragmented, fragmentation charges, pardon me. Uh, launch platforms, the ARM can be launched from various uh, platforms, including aircrafts, fighter jets, uh, uh, bombers, and even helicopters. So that makes it very, very versatile. In response, the Indian Air Force is stepping up its game. It is now considering to deploy two indigenous systems to protect its S-400 batteries at closer range. The quick reaction surface-to-air missiles or the QR-SAMs and the vertical launch SR-SAMs. QR-SAM, a fast reaction system with 30 km range designed to guard mobile columns from jets, drones and cruise missiles. VL-SR-SAM, based on Astra missiles, they can deliver 360 degree protection and can hit low flying threats up to 80 kilometers away, including sea skimming missiles. Both systems are networked, mobile and made in India. They have been developed by the DRDO. The bigger picture, a layered integrated air defense system at the top S-400 in the middle system like the Akash and Barak-8 and now at the bottom QR-SAM and VL SRSAM, forming a complete umbrella from high altitude bombers to low flying drones. And that's not all, India is also developing its own long range air defense system under Project Kusha to eventually rival capabilities of the S 400 itself. This move is not just about defending the skies, it's about strategic independence. By relying on Homegrown missile systems, India is doubling down on Atmanirbhar Bharat, building world-class defense capabilities with Indian innovation at the core. In an era 
of hypersonic threats and unpredictable adversaries, resilience is no longer optional. It's mission critical.